What is good guys back here with another YouTube video and in case you cannot tell by the title below this video will be my video uh, reviewing AEW New Japan Pro Wrestling Forbidden Door Pay-Per-View 2021 that took place on uh, June 26, uh, 2022 down in Chicago, Illinois and this one I won't hopefully spend too too much time on before I get started. would love to know what your thoughts and opinions are on Forbidden Door. Was it what you expected? Did it over deliver? Did it under deliver? Again I would love to know what your thoughts are down in the comments below. There were four matches on the pre-show. Uh, the buy-in which is available on YouTube. Did not watch it mostly because I wasn't like there weren't any matches that I quote unquote had to watch kind of deal but I did watch the pay-per-view first match on the main card was uh, Minoru Suzuki and uh, Chris Jericho's Appreciation Society which was uh, represented by uh, Jericho and Sammy Guevara they uh, beat Eddie Kingston uh, Wheeler Yuta and Shota uh, Yumino I think that's how you pronounce uh, the person's name it was a really good opening match for a pay-per-view but if it was one of it's one of those things where if it was like second third or fourth on the card kind of deal it would still be a good match but the right spot was for uh the opening match on the pay-per-view the second match was a triple threat winner takes all tag team uh match uh ftr were defending the ring of honor tag team championships uh, Great O'Conn and Jeff Car Cobb, a part of uh, United Empire, were defending the IWGP Tag Team Championships, and Rapongi Vice were just there, kind of deal. If people remember this match for any one reason, relatively early on, uh, Dax Harwood, uh, uh, I, I personally say dislocated his shoulder. I'm not a medical doctor. Apparently his shoulder popped out, popped back in kind of deal. Again, not a doctor. But considering that happened relatively early on into uh, the match, rest of it was good considering kind of deal. Like, it, let's say out of five, it was like a three and a half or a four uh, kind of deal. FTR retained the uh, ROH tag titles, but won the uh, IWGP, and hopefully they'll spend uh, not necessarily a lot of time in Japan, but quite a bit of time. Then for uh, the very first ever All-Atlantic Championship, you had Four Corner Survival, Fatal 4-Way, whatever you would prefer uh, to call it. Clark, Connors, Miro, Malachi Black, and Pac, Pac, however you would want to choose to say his name and to my surprise and from what I've seen quite a few people surprised Pac actually walked out as champion a lot of people have said that hey this title was quote unquote made for Miro kind of deal and I'm happy that the very first ever champion for the All Atlantic Championship is Pac then you had uh, Darby Allen Sting and uh, I call him Shingo because I have no idea how to pronounce his last name, but from New Japan versus uh, Al, Al Fantasmo and the Young Bucks and Dudes with Attitudes, Alan Stink and uh, Shingo won this one. I wasn't paying too, too much attention to. To be honest, I was up going, having a bathroom break, sitting down, watch couple of minutes up grab a drink grab some food that kind of stuff but from what I've seen it was a okay match considering I'm not a fan of one uh the another one I don't know or another two I don't know for sure much about then you had the young bucks and sting uh kind of deal and whatnot uh but yeah like I said not necessarily the best match uh but not necessarily the worst match I've ever seen then you had Tony Storm versus uh, the Thunder Rosa for the AEW Women's Championship in this one. Don't get me wrong, it was a good match, but I honestly was expecting something more considering I know that both women can go in the ring. Then you had Will Ospreay versus Orange Cassidy in a good match, kind of what you expect. Uh, considering Orange Cassidy and Will Ospreay were the two people in this match, but I think 
people won't really either talk about or remember this match for the match itself. It was the fact that uh, Osprey and his two buddies, I'm forgetting their names, uh, uh, um, something open, uh, Aussie open or something, uh, came out and they were going to attack uh, Orange Cassidy, uh, Rapunky Vice came back out, uh, got dealt with, and then Shibata came out and uh, whatnot attacked Osprey and Cassidy put his sunglasses on to Shibata, so that was kind of cool uh, and whatnot. I don't know for sure if Shibata will have uh, a match for AEW some point down the road, uh, but just seeing him in front of a uh, AEW crowd and getting that positive response is super cool, uh, nonetheless. Then you had Claudio Castagnoli, better known as Cesaro in the WWE, making his AEW debut against Zack Sabre Jr. And this match was probably the best match bell to bell, like pure wrestling wise kind of deal and whatnot, which is cool to see, definitely different than the previous match. Claudio, to kind of my surprise, picked up the uh, victory. I was kind of like... 51-49 towards uh, Sabre Jr. Then in the second last match of the night, Jay White successfully defending the IWG IWGP World Heavyweight Championship in a four-corner survival four-way match, fatal four-way, whatever you would want to know it as, against Adam Page, Adam Cole, and I won't even try and pronounce his first name, but Okada. And like I said, or at least I think I said, a good match. I was expecting kind of more from it like I would have rather I don't know the match length but it cut in half and have uh, like two matches out of it like let's say Paige Okada or Paige White Okada Adam Cole and whatever uh, mat like those two matches equal up the length of this um, uh, four corner survival match and whatnot but like I said good match kind of deal like I uh, but I was still kind of sort of expecting more if that makes any sort of sense then in the main event you had uh John Moxley uh, uh Hiroshi Tanahashi for the interim IWG or interim AEW championship uh, and whatnot IWGP was the previous match and this one bell to bell was not the best match on the card I will fully admit that but it was definitely one of the cooler matches to kind of see because I am uh I don't want to say a fan of Tanahashi and Mox but like this has been one of those matches I personally would love to see in North America ever since Mox came to AEW a little over three years ago so it's cool that it happened it's cool that uh like the crowd was pretty gosh darn good throughout it or at least from what i've seen uh and whatnot like uh, it was just so cool and plus uh seeing tanahashi wrestle uh in a uh like a i don't want to say major city but like a major wrestling city like chicago super cool uh and whatnot so it was more of a coolness factor than a good bell to bell kind of match if that makes any sort of sense and yeah uh john moxley is your new interim uh i think i'm saying that word right if not i apologize canadian accent and everything but either way i think nine out of ten people who follow wrestling online like social media and whatnot predicted mox to win so it's not too terribly surprising uh and whatnot but yeah just the coolness factor of mox and tanahashi wrestling in uh, the US is definitely really cool uh, and whatnot and Mox picking up the win was okay. Then after Chris Jericho and Daniel Garcia came out attacked uh, Mox which led to long story short everybody who's taking part of the uh, blood and guts uh, thing on Dynamite this week eventually brawled pretty much uh, closed out the uh, show which kind of shows how much uh, AEW cares about this Forbidden Door because uh, why not use a pay-per-view to promote the TV uh, kind of deal uh, and whatnot. So yeah, that is it for my review of AEW, New Japan Pro Wrestling Forbidden Door. I would love to know what your thoughts are 
on it down in the comments below. While you are down there, feel free to hit the like, subscribe, turn on post notifications, check out some of my other channels if you have not done so already uh, and whatnot. And yeah, hope to see you guys in the next video, whatever that might be. The world that we tend to make up is nothing but a fantasy until you wake up. I feel like I'm just lying to myself. Lying to myself, yeah. Cause I just crossed the line like I'm playing offside. I do it how I want and I'ma do it till I die. I feel like I'm just lying to myself. But it's